If I tell you about a brand that your mom would buy comfortable shoes from, you'd probably think of Skechers. And if we go back just six years, and I told you about a brand for good old country club dads that sells comfy shoes, this time you'd probably think of New Balance. Today, New Balance doesn't really have that image of being for architect dads, lawyers, or Apple CEOs anymore. Now it's a hype brand. And while the old school customers don't quite fit with New Balance anymore, there's a new brand that's slowly attracting all the folks. This brand is straight up rocking the sneaker market with the most insane growth in sneaker history. They've achieved in 10 years what no other brand has, and yet there's a good chance you've never even heard of them. Unless you live in Switzerland, of course. There, you can't miss this brand. No surprise, we're talking about On Running, a brand that kicked off a little over 10 years ago and now is worth more than 8 billion euros. It's an absolutely wild success story. And the reason behind it? Well, for some, it's the innovative technology and killer marketing strategy. But for others, the success story isn't all that ethical and moral. Some even call them one of the most fraudulent sneaker brands of the moment, making big bucks with really shady methods. So what's the damn deal? Is On Running about to become the next New Balance? Is this success totally deserved, or is there a darker side hiding there? That's what we're diving into in this video. New video. We absolutely had to talk about the Swiss sneaker brand that's kind of flipping the game right now. Well, they're flipping the sneaker game for your dad. Among the younger crowd, not many really care, or they might not even know about them since most of you have never seen this brand and maybe just glimpsed it without even knowing its name. Wait a minute. You. And yet, just like True Classic we talked about last time, and you folks didn't know much about it, On is also a brand that's blown up in no time in an ultra-competitive market. Because when you're in the running shoe game, you're up against Nike, Asics, Adidas, basically big players you'd rather not have as rivals. But that didn't stop them from exponential growth, chipping away at the giant's territory at breakneck speed. So, like we always do, let's get the context right about how On Running and its founders built such a huge multinational who's making billions after for just a decade. It all starts in the early 2000s with this guy named Olivier Benhard, a Swiss athlete who's all about extreme races. He's into triathlons, duathlons, Ironmans, that's his jam. He's running for hours, biking for more hours, and all that just to put on his best swim cap, and you guessed it, swim for even more hours. They don't know me, son! Seriously, it's mind-boggling. I checked his race records. They last six hours, and he's first every time. Imagine the last guy's time. You boys are so slow. Now, I'm no duathlon expert, but considering his track record, he ain't half bad. Is he a legend in his sport? Honestly, I ain't got a clue in the world, but his career ended in 05 due to an injury he blames on his running shoes. From then on, he's got only one thing on his mind. He realized that throughout his career, none of his running shoes were comfortable and light enough for him. So he takes on the challenge of creating the perfect running shoe. And for that, he came up with the genius idea of sticking a garden hose to his shoes. Well, it was time for Thomas to leave. He had seen everything. Okay, in reality, it wasn't really his idea. An engineer from EPFZ pitched in the technology, then sold him the patent. Now, whether the story of the first prototype with garden hoses is true, or just a flashy storytelling move to make it sound like Nike and Bill Bowerman making soles with a waffle iron in his kitchen, I don't know. But it's from this relationship between Olivier and the engineer that cloud tech technology emerges four years later in 2009. A year later, On Running is born, with two new partners and friends, Casper Copetti and David Ailman, both marketing focused dudes who worked in big communication and marketing multinationals like McKinsey or Young and Rubica. Despite their expertise in sports and marketing, well, making and selling shoes isn't something you pull off overnight, and nothing really predestined them for success. Probably why the engineer just sold them the patent and didn't associate himself with the project. From there, they just had a shabby prototype and an idea. So to create the first real pair, they bring in a Swiss industrial designer. And the design idea, according to me, who's obviously one of the greatest sneaker experts, which you should subscribe to so you don't miss my next bangers, by the way, looks really inspired by the Air Max 1. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Sure, visually, it's nothing alike, but in terms of disruptiveness and highlighting technology, it's all there. They say it themselves, the goal was to showcase the technology, because to convince, showing is the best way. And we've seen that in the history of Air Max 1. They could have had a more normal sole while keeping the technology, and actually today, they do have more regular soles, like the Cloud Surfer. But they intentionally kept this flashy sole to use as a marketing tool. The Soul was almost the basic selling point. More than a pair of running shoes, they were selling Cloud Tech, the innovative sole technology that lets you run on clouds. You caught that. Cloud Tech comes from the fact that the soles are supposed to resemble clouds, and the name On, that's apparently on another damn level. Apparently, 
it's because these funky cushion things under the sole press on your arch, waking up your body kind of like an on-off switch. So when you take off the pair, you're off, and when you put them on, you're on. Yeah, that makes sense. For the On founders, their shoes had it all. Successful branding and concept, excellent technology and comfort, but here's what might surprise you. They were also convinced they stood out in terms of design. Casper Capetti, one of the founders, even claimed with a bit of arrogance that On was way ahead in terms of design compared to competitors. They were kind of the apple of running shoes, stylish and techy. They even had the nerves to trash talk the competition, saying their pairs looked like tuned JDM cars. What the f did you just f***ing say about me, you little b to break into the running shoe market, they leveraged their networks, whether Olivier's built during his athlete career or Casper and David's more corporate connections. Soon enough, On was being sold in multiple stores, tested in running blogs, or simply worn by Swiss athletes. The hype caught on quickly, and the reviews were generally super positive about their product. It was the brand everyone absolutely had to try. They really pushed the whole Swiss-made technology aspect created by EPFZ engineers. And even though Switzerland has never been a footwear or even a sports reference in general, well, let's give ourselves credit we got Federer and a lot of other dudes that nobody knows except us. But the Swiss side of the brand was a crucial argument to prove the seriousness of On Running. They're Swiss, so they're precise. We can trust them since they know what they're doing. Kinda like Rapids Vision, right? You sure about that? In 2014, they dropped their best seller, the On Cloud. Even though they initially targeted the niche market of experienced runners, they realized that their brand quickly interested customers they hadn't initially considered. Older folks looking for comfy shoes to go grocery shopping. And the reason? Their shoes are super lightweight, ultra comfortable, plus you don't need to lace them up to put them on. This older audience probably helped them become one of the fastest growing brands in sneaker history, nearly doubling their revenue every year. They kept developing models like the Cloud Surfer and Cloud X, and they started getting distributed in more lifestyle-oriented stores. But what really took them to the next level was the arrival of a prestigious shareholder, Roger Federer. He actually reached out to them first, just to chat initially, but he got roped in by the founders who offered him a stake in the brand. And considering the company's stats, it was probably one of the best financial investments of his career. After Roger joined, the company didn't stop growing, quite the opposite. Partly thanks to Roger, since he wasn't just a sponsored athlete anymore, he was now part of the company. And despite already astronomical numbers, they were still on a mind-boggling growth trajectory, going from around 400 million euros in revenue in 2020 to 700 million the next year in 2021, then almost doubling again in 2022, hitting 1.2 billion euros in revenue. They might not look like much, but they're literally speed running the sneaker game. They're outpacing brands like Hoka and Solomon. But check this insanity. If they maintain this insane pace, mathematically, they could literally overtake Nike in the next five years. This is fucking insane! Okay, don't worry. It won't happen in five years. Not even in a million years, in my opinion. Honestly, first off, the brand is only making running shoes, whereas the sports giants are everywhere. Plus, it's still kind of a dorky brand. Even if we see The Rock rocking their pairs, they're doing luxury collabs, and more lifestyle models are popping up in sneaker and streetwear shops. For most people, it's still your dad newest pair. But apparently, there's another major issue with this brand. Everyone agrees that the product is super comfortable, light, and enjoyable to wear. But one complaint stands out. The lack of durability, almost verging on a scam for some. Imagine this. We've even had multiple news reports in Switzerland pointing out the disastrous lifespan of their product, portraying the brand as one of the worst in terms of value for the money. And you know what's frustrating? That mom saying the brand is terrible. Her pairs are done after just three weeks of wearing them to work. Yet she bought 12 pairs. <laughs> Kinda reminds me of the love-hate relationship sneakerheads have with Nike. Many complain about their product's quality, but buying anything but Nike is out of the question. There's a similar grip on running has on the senior citizen. Dads have discovered their new holy grail of comfy shoes, and so, even though reluctantly, they end up buying a new pair every three months. This criticism of on running's durability is everywhere. In documentaries, YouTube comments, trust pilot reviews where the brand gets roasted. So, is on running intentionally selling disposable to 200 buck shoes? Honestly, I don't know. In their defense, durability issues are a bit of a side effect of creating lightweight, comfortable shoes, which often use thinner and less durable materials. Plus, they're one of the few brands with a secondhand marketplace for their products. On their Onwards website, you can buy secondhand on shoes for much less. So while these things do exist, like we've seen with nylon stocking manufacturers intentionally making them less durable to sell more, I wouldn't go as far as to say they're deliberately designing their shoes to become obsolete. Cause, you know, I don't want a lawsuit. Get 
get away from me! Truth be told, despite all the marketing and flag waving for Switzerland showcasing the Swiss quality, well, their shoes are still made deep in Vietnam. And having had several of their products in my hands, they're clearly not more fraudulent than industry giants. But they're shoes made from synthetic materials in Vietnam, so naturally, you shouldn't expect a pair that'll last five years. Anyway, if we had to sum up on running, it's basically a brand that's a lot like 90s to 2000s New Balance, draws a lot from Nike's marketing, and has a half cool, half dorky vibe like Salomon. That's definitely not a brand I could wear, but now you know more about them, it's your turn to tell me what you think about this brand. I'm in this space, shoot, lights on the top of the roof, I think that they're stars.